Alright, so today I'm going to be covering how to get your battery from the front of the car to the trunk. I'm doing this on my 89 240SX S13 coupe. Three big things you're going to want to do here before you start this. Three main points. You're going to want to plan it out, get a piece of paper, maybe draw it up. It's not a real hard, intricate design, it's pretty straightforward. Two is you're going to want to have your materials, all the parts you need. This is going to reduce trips you need to take to the store, burn signs, you're going to get done a lot more quickly. Three, you want to have the install. That's basically everything is ready. You have it all planned out, ready to go in, and then you initiate the install and get it done as fast as possible, efficient, you're going to learn something, and hopefully it doesn't catch on fire. I am going to link you to the parts, the hardware you're going to need in the description, make it a little easier for you to get everything assembled and get your battery location on the way. Well, basically, as a general overview, you're going to need zero gauge wire. Some people use two. I prefer to use zero to stay on the safe side. Uh, fine strand is going to be better. Uh, copper definitely it carries current better. Definitely shielded. You're going to want some clamps to use the clamp for the battery. You're going to want four to six copper eyelets, about half inch size. You're going to want the same amount of solder slugs put in those eyelets to connect everything because a simple soldering iron and a little bit of solder is probably not going to cut it. I end up using a blowtorch which I'll show you a little later okay, on. I'll go ahead and start at the front here. As you can see this is where my battery used to reside. I ended up going SR20 DET swap. I had to move the battery out to cut a hole and make room for my intercooler piping. It's either pretty much move it to the back or switch to a smaller lawnmower battery. What you're going to have is you're going to have two cables. This being the positive cable and this being the negative cable. This hooks somewhere down here below your front fuse box which then grounds in a couple places. And this holds your power wire, which powers everything and it also holds your starter and alternator wire. I went ahead and chopped these off so I could put a fresh eyelid on to there. secure to my common power stud. As you can see, I have three or four different lines going to it. This is the power wire to my fans. These are your starter and alternator. This is the battery relocation. And this being the power wire going into your fuse box. I did secure this down, bolt it down, sturdy, it's not going anywhere. I used very short screws as to not uh, leave anything sharp under here to minimize the possibility of something happening. But this is basically how I did mine. It's very straightforward and simple, not difficult at all. As you can see, and I'll link you to the part to this. I think it's $28. It comes with the nut and the washer and everything you need to secure everything down there. So once you go ahead and get all of this good stuff out, you're going to run your zero gauge power wire, which you got from Lowe's or Home Depot or another source. You're going to run it into an eyelet, run it back. I ran mine through the firewall by cutting a small slit on the rubber grommet that holds the wiring harness, allow it to go through without any, without, with keeping the grommet, ran it through right there. Ran it right under here, if you can see it's a little dark. There's also little holes that go right through the chassis. Ran it right through there, comes in, comes in, and then comes out right there. That took a little finessing, but it is definitely possible. I then ran it under the side up top and into my circuit breaker. Now, this is a very important part of your battery relocation. The circuit breaker serves as a means of protection in case of the event of over voltage or over amperage or any electrical problem. What it's going to do is if it goes above that 150 amp it's going to cut the power. That is why you want to keep this as far as back and close to the battery as possible. I put mine about two feet away. You're really supposed to, it's recommended to keep it within a foot or 12 inches because you have all of this current and all this voltage going through your car through this wire. 
something goes wrong, it's gonna catch on fire and it's gonna be a bad time. So I went ahead and mounted that. And another reason I mounted it here is because I didn't want to take the chance of puncturing the fuel tank of mounting it in the trunk. So I went ahead and mounted it up here. It worked out for me so far. Definitely no problems. Okay, now we're back in the trunk. We followed everything back, ran our lines. We're going to need, like I said, the clamps for the battery. And you're also going to want to get some sort of steel for Lowe's or a Home Depot. A piece of steel, maybe maybe three feet would be plenty. You want to bend it, drill a couple holes, and line it up so you can strap your battery down. I also use a couple foam pieces to really snug it in there. I might be adding a few more straps. Maybe with some JB Weld on the front because you can't go any farther up. This is about, you know. This is about all the farther out and up I would go. I was really pushing getting close to the fuel tank here. I'd say anything in this area and out is going to be fuel tank. So you're going to want to stay very far away from that. As you can see, I did mine on the other side. It's a little difficult there, but managed it. Battery's pretty sturdy. I'm not afraid of it going anywhere. You're also gonna want to ground it here in the back. I thought that was the easiest. I did drill a hole in the wheel well, but this ended up being a lot easier. Take a wire brush to polish the metal here, get direct contact so there's no paint, and run your grounding wire right there. Okay, so now we've got all of our supplies, and you wanna, you're wondering, how do I get this thick wire into these connectors? Because soldering, and soldering iron is not gonna do it this time. And unless you want to take the wires to uh, a stereo place or a professional place that deals with electronics to get it crimped, you're probably not going to want to dish out the crimping tool that's around $200. So the next best and pretty cheap thing is going to be solder slugs. Unfortunately, I don't have any left. I burned up all of my half inch eyelets and my solder slugs during my relocation, but we have to use our imagination here a little bit. All you're really going to need is a pair of pliers. Definitely a longer pair than this. I used a pair that was about that long. You're going to have your eyelet with your half inch opening. You're going to have your zero gauge wire, your, it, your blowtorch, and your solder slug. What you're going to do is you're going to take your pair of pliers, and I did this with two people. Made it a lot easier. It can't be done with one, but I definitely recommend two. You're going to hold your eyelet like this with the opening at the top. You're going to wedge your soldering slug in there. Sometimes you got to put it into a vise, beat it in a little bit, but it, it'll make its way in. Just make sure that you select the zero gauge solder slug for the correct eyelet you have. You're going to put that in there, take your blowtorch, heat it up. Don't get it flaming hot so it's spitting solder everywhere, but just a couple inches away. You'll start to see the flux and everything heat up. You'll see it melt, head to the bottom. Then you're going to have your buddy, or if you're talented, your other hand, stick in the zero gauge wire, all while the blowtorch is still keeping this hot. So you gotta have the blowtorch on this the whole time to keep this solder liquid. As soon as you take that blowtorch off, within a few seconds, it's gonna harden up. Give it a second to cool. I put mine in some water just to cool it quicker and then you have a solid connection and then do this for every eyelet you need. So I ended up using four or five. So I would get six just to be safe. I'll link you in the description. I use wiringproducts.com for all my stuff. Uh, they sell them in twos, $1.80 for two. And solder slugs I think are a little cheaper than that. So it's really not bad. So that's my video on the battery relocation guys. Just for a quick review, the parts you're gonna need, four to six copper eyelets. I use a half inch because that's the half inch stud I use. You're gonna wanna get that half inch stud, obviously. Four to six solder slugs, or however many eyelets you order, if you need something to get the wire made into the copper eyelets. You're gonna want your circuit breaker, your battery clamps, your battery tie down hardware, and I'd say 20 to 25 feet of the zero gauge. Thin-stranded copper preferred wire, it doesn't have to be. The thin-stranded does carry the current a little better. As for tools, I'd say you're gonna need a blowtorch, a pair of pliers, a pair of wire cutters. In my case, I use sheet metal pliers because they're a lot thicker. I didn't have a whole lot to cut the zero gauge wire with, but it did work with a little bit of patience. A couple sockets, a ratchet, you know, definitely a lot of patience. 
not terrible. If you have any questions, message me or find my Instagram at I just want to drink. That wraps it up for this week. Let me know if I can help you with anything else, guys. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions you want me to do on the next video, I'm constantly working on my 240 on my off weeks, so maybe I can help. I'd love to help you guys. Thanks. For